interpreter of Tibet, and the uh, war was going on. And he looks at me and he says, are you sure we're supposed to be here? And I said, I know without a doubt that we're supposed to be here. He says, how do you know you're supposed to be here? I said, because we're here. God closes the door before, not in. And I move and let the shepherd lead me. And as he leads me, I look to him to close the doors and deliver me before, not in. And I'm saying that because I know you're supposed to be here the next two weeks because you are here. There are a lot of obstacles in coming up to this and getting to this point and being able to get here. There are a lot of things that had to work through. God could have stopped you at any point if he didn't want you here. And so I'm excited for the next two weeks because I know that God has brought together the perfect group of people in the perfect time. And you're at a perfect place in your heart to learn the things that, that God wants to teach you. So everything is perfect. Now one of the things that Ray and I talk about often and we've had to learn in this ministry of traveling and as much as we're gone, we don't think about home until it's time to go home. You can wreck your whole trip by thinking about home. And uh, uh, Ray would witness to this. Uh, that we came under incredible attack in the early days by sitting in bed and thinking about what was happening with the kids, what was happening with our wives, what was going on, what was taking place here, what was taking place there. And so one of the things I'd encourage you to do is not think about home until you're ready to go home. And at, at, at that time, then you can point your no nose that way and, and head off. We're going to be looking this week at lecturing and how do we go through the, the notebook with a group of people. And a group of people can be two people, it could actually be one person, it could be a Sunday school class, or you could be lecturing to a, to a broader group. But we want to go through the diagrams and begin to see the flow of what we're trying to do and what we want to accomplish in a person's life. You could give me a map right now and put on the map a dot where the airport is and I can't get to the airport. Why? I don't know where I'm at. So you got to put a dot on the map of where I'm at, and if you put one where I'm at, then I know where I'm going to go. Now we'll stick with this one simple teaching, and, and we'll build around it, and we'll build, and we'll build, and we'll build, but there's nothing the nearness of Christ won't fix in your life. Truth isn't preached, it's demonstrated. So I have Christ on this hand, and problems on this hand, and when Christ is my focus, the problems are there, but they don't overwhelm me. Amen? And when my problems are my focus then I'm overwhelmed. So one of the things we want to do with people and we want to do in lectures is let them understand where they're at, to put a dot on the map, to understand what the problems are, why they're there, what the obstacles are, but then to always be driving for the goal and the goal is an awareness of Christ, a recognition of Christ, a focus on Christ because there's nothing His nearness doesn't fix in my life. So we'll be going through the diagrams, each one of them, and I'll look at the goal of the diagram and then how do we get to the diagram? And you'll be getting in groups and you'll do a workshop every 30 minutes and you'll go over the diagram with someone else. Now, I don't want you to have a panic attack. If you can understand the material at a 5% level at the end of the week, that's all you need to know because the rest of your life you'll build on it. Doug was just with me in, uh, in Brazil and we did a taping there for the Brazilians. And we finished up and Doug says, we, gotta, we, we need to do this again in the U.S. because it's 20, he said, it's over 25% new material. Well, I'm always adding to it. I'm always adding. I'm always clarifying. And so if you get the basic idea, you'll be able to add yourself because the best material is yet to be written. You're the one that can write it. And it has to come through your uniqueness. So if you learn everything exactly the way I learn it, you've killed your own uniqueness and creativity. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to get a general idea of what we're communicating, and then you communicate it out of your own uniqueness. And we'll encourage you to change things and do things. Now, I didn't think Hannah was tired enough or exhausted enough after uh, working full-time and graduating from seminary. So as soon as she graduated, I sent her to Honduras and had her lecture a group of pastors there. Now, I don't know how well you would consider you know the material at 10%, 20%, what would you say? Okay, so say, say you know the material at 10%. Was the time with the pastors effective? 
Yeah, because you can't go wrong. The 10% you gave was better than what they were getting because the 10% was Jesus. And so we're not stressed about getting everything right and exactly right. If you've pointed someone to Christ, you've done more than 99% of people will ever do in their lives. And so the thing I like about this ministry is there's no way to fail. You just can't fail. And you'll talk and, and things will fall out of your mouth and they don't sound right and they don't fit and all this. But if you tried to point someone to Christ, you did better than anyone else. And so I want to encourage you in that. You don't have to know all the material. We want to know it at a 5% level. And then you'll begin to build on that in your life and be able to share that with uh, other people. Now, we'll go through it, and it'll seem overwhelming as we do it. Uh, <clears throat> when I was in graduate school, one of the graduate schools, they told us, uh, we had a meeting before the school started, and they told us what we had to have done. So we had to do a, a small thesis, but then you had to have memorized every chapter in the Old and New Testament, the content. All language problems in Greek and Hebrew, and any archaeological sites that related to it. Because, you know, the American program would just regurgitate. That's all you do is you just regurgitate. You don't learn. I mean, you just have to be able to regurgitate. That's what we do there. And I looked at that and walked away and went and had coffee with a friend of mine from, uh, that had been in the Vietnam War and I said, I'm done. I mean, how do you do that? I'm working full time and that's what they want out of us. And the oral exams were three days. You just sat in with different professors, and one in the morning, one in the afternoon for three days. And they ask you questions. What's in Matthew 5? What's in Ezekiel 12? And they just went like that. That's all they did. It was, it was shocking. I said, I can't do it. And he said, listen. When I was in the military, and he was in special forces, he said they brought us into a room and there were parts everywhere all over the floor. Just hundreds of parts. And it was for a supercomputer that they used on the field. And the sergeant said to us, the goal is for us to be able to put the supercomputer together in the dark. And he said he had us line up against the wall and turn out all the lights and it was pitch black and all we heard was the sergeant on his knees shuffling and in 30-40 minutes they turn on the lights and there was the supercomputer and the guy fired it up and he goes that's what you have to do and Bob said he wanted to quit but the guy told him no here's what we're gonna do you're gonna take this piece apart and put it together and apart and put it together in the light and then you're gonna do it in the dark then you're going to do the next piece and the same thing. Then you're going to put those two pieces together in the dark and we're going to do it bit by bit by bit until you can put the whole thing together. He said it was amazing. At the end of three months, they turn out the lights and he had, he had his together faster than the sergeant. Well, it's just taking it bit by bit by bit. So what we'll do is we'll do a section. Say we'll do a section on faith. We'll look at the diagrams on faith. We'll look at the goal of each diagram and how that diagram fits into the whole. And then you're going to get, you get with another person and you'll go over that diagram with them and you'll help each other. And we'll be walking around to help you to answer your questions. And then we'll come back and we'll do another diagram. And when you go back this time, you have to go through both of those. Then we'll do a third one and you do all three. And you'll see that you can go through those very, very quickly. So I want to encourage you, don't be overwhelmed in any, uh, in, uh, in any of this because we'll be able to move right along in it and you'll see we'll be here to answer all your questions. This week we're going to do uh, lecturing, and then next week we're going to do counseling. And you'll see how you tie this together, but you'll have a good grasp of the diagrams. Now I think we have about 120 diagrams in the notebook, and we're going to try to cover most of those. There's another 120 diagrams on top of that that we're not going to be covering because those are diagrams that help make the other diagrams clear and there's just material that we've added over the years. So what I'll do is uh, I'll have a couple of evenings where anybody that wants to can come in here, you can ask questions, I'll show you some more diagrams, show you how it clarifies different things and you can ask me. But it's really uh, the most important thing is just to get the core down and, and get the concept down and see where we're taking a person. How do you take up the cross and deny yourself if you don't know what self is? And so what we want to do is explain what self is, to give definition to terms. And to look at the blockages that people have in making Christ their focus. We're always going to this very, very simple truth. What I want you to do in the next...